2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5 review, in like with you. Please support us by pressing like and subscribe button, and also turn on the bell button so that we can continue to provide the latest information about car and automotive for you. Thank you. The day the 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5 arrived in my driveway, I tweeted that it was the most attractive vehicle I'll drive this year, even though I have 44 weeks of cars left to test. After a week at the helm, my opinion hasn't changed. Hot diggity dog, this thing looks fantastic inside and out. That'd be enough, but the Ioniq 5 is also a joy to pilot, as plush as anything else in the class, and impressively well equipped too. But that same week has revealed the kind of annoyances that would drive me bonkers if I put an Ionic in my driveway. These issues are so minute you'll think I'm a lunatic for being bothered, yet I also find them so glaring I'm left wondering how the heck they made it out of Hyundai's design and engineering centers. Do they ruin the Ionic 5? Not the in the least, this is an excellent EV. But they're annoyances nonetheless. Design. Let me just say it again, the Ionic 5 is probably the most attractive car I'll drive this year. I love everything about the design. The front is squat and wide, with a slit for the headlights and a black grille that sits just above a wide, silvery shield of trim that also lights up at night. The lines on the hood are sharp and sculpted, but unfussy. In back, the 8-bit taillights are a delight. On more than a few occasions, I just stood behind the Ionic locking and unlocking it to see the oversized pixels fire. The dot matrix housing span sits above its own silvery trim piece, mirroring the front of the car. Cladding surrounds the bottom of the car, kicking upward on the rear bumper and at each door, with slashes on the wheel arches that mirror the saw blade wheels. This could have been offensive, to hell with the SUV-ification of cars like the Ionic 5, which are only a millimeter removed from a traditional hatchback, but the silver finish is less visually heavy and provides a sharp contrast to the body color. The 5's profile is its best angle, highlighted by front and rear overhangs that remind me of my 2006 Mini. They're impressively short at both ends, while the wheels exist at the extreme limits of the vehicle's body. If anything, the Ionic 5 does the classic bulldog stance better than any of today's Minis. A sharp shoulder line extends from the rear end and meets a similar element that surges up from the bottom of the rear wheel arch and, along with an aggressively raked D-pillar, gives the sense that the Ionic is always moving. It's all brilliant and anyone that thinks otherwise can shut up, because I won't have it. Critiques? I can think of only one, and it has to do with Hyundai's muted color palette. It's as expressive as a doorknob, when this car's body is begging for a shade to show off its lines. Give me lime green, starburst yellow, or candy apple red, this design deserves more. Similarly, the Ionic's interior is only available in gray or black. I normally advise against lighter shades, but the gray better shows off the attractive patterning on the leatherette upholstery and the slight contrast in the seat piping. It's a better match to the white, apple-like surround on the Mercedes-inspired digital cluster, too, which marries a gauge cluster and touchscreen in a single slab. Build quality is high, and all the materials feel solid and rich. Comfort. Like the Volkswagen ID.4 and Ford Mustang Mach-E. The first thing that greets you when opening the Ionic's front doors is the immense space. The flat floor and lack of a traditional transmission tunnel make the front row feel wide open. A center console juts up from between the seats, with a huge cubby, two cup holders, and USB -A inputs, but there's enough space Hyundai could get away with a front bench if it wanted. Joining that huge stowage area is an ample glove box and healthy door pockets. Trunk space is adequate at 27.2 cubic feet and a max of 59.3, swallowing a large golf bag with room to spare. The front chairs have a low seating position and right-sized bolsters that make long journeys less arduous. Overall support for aggressive cornering is absent, but that's okay, after all, the seats are still comfortable and the Ionic 5 is a lover, not a fighter. The limited trim does add a neat relaxation function that includes a pop-out footrest for the driver's seat. It's about as plush as the Max Recline seat in the Ford F-150 when it comes to catching some Zs. The back seats are similarly spacious, with huge amounts of leg and headroom. I wouldn't hesitate to put three adults back there on a two-hour journey. Sizable, wide-opening doors make ingress and egress easy, while Hyundai's restraint with the Ionic's beltline and roofline mean there's plenty of light. A standard panoramic roof adds to the airy sensation. 
Because EVs don't have gas engine to hide things, control of road and wind noise is a high priority. Hyundai handles this with standard laminated glass on the front and rear doors and acoustic glass on the windshield. There's no active noise cancellation or other trickery, mainly because it's unnecessary. The Ionic 5 is spookily quiet at speed, with virtually no wind noise and only modest amounts of tire roar from the 255 45s, 20 Michelin Primacy all seasons. Ride quality is on par with the segment leader, the Volkswagen ID.4. The Ionic struggles a bit to maintain its balance on extremely pothole-ridden roads. Tis the season in southeastern Michigan, but run-of-the-mill expansion joints and patch jobs are little match for the well-isolated Ionic 5. Technology, it's in the tech department where the Ionic's annoyances crop up. Its 12.3-inch touchscreen runs the same infotainment software as any other modern Hyundai or Kia, so you'll enjoy beautiful graphics, sharp responses, and a logical selection of menus and options. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are still absent, of course, and it's perplexing that this is still a problem on a new vehicle. The bigger woe comes when you want to do little things, like turn on the heated seats. Despite physical climate controls that match any other Hyundai product, there is no hard button for the seat heater, ventilation, or heated steering wheel. You'll need to swipe left from the home screen, find the appropriate icon, tap it, then drag a slider up or down only to realize you've gone too far and need to make another adjustment. This is two or three steps too many while parked and it's downright perilous at highway speeds. I don't understand this decision when you consider the amount of real estate below the touchscreen. Missing and poorly labeled features aside, the Ionic 5 claws back points for merely being well equipped. Everything is standard on the limited trim, and there are no options on the base SE or SEL, so customers need only choose an interior and exterior color and sign on the dotted line. The Ionic also introduces one novel feature that's already made waves in the US market. Every Ionic 5 comes standard with vehicle to load, or V2L, capability. Not unlike Ford's ProPower onboard system, the Ionic 5 has two ports that deliver up to 3.6 kilowatts of power, more than anything but the range-topping ProPower setup on the hybrid-powered F150. There's a conventional three-prong plug under the rear bench, while a 120-volt adapter for the exterior charge port allows owners to draw power from there, too. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.